Hello everyone. So in this video, I will be explaining you about uh, some of the points that you need to know in digestion of carbohydrates. Now the carbohydrate digestion, it begins in the mouth. So especially the carbohydrates that are there in our diet is starch, which is a polysaccharide coming from plant source. Lactose coming from milk and milk product, sucrose coming from table sugar and fructose coming from high fructose corn syrup. So when we take food, so we need to masticate it. So it means we need to chew it for 20 to 40 times. So that's the minimum number of times that we need to chew so that we are going to digest carbohydrate in the mouth. So let me draw the anatomy of the digestive system so consider that uh, so here I am drawing a mouth and taking it down to see the use of agus and then the stomach and duodenum so i'll make a pancreas here down here this is the pancreas now when we take a food so it's so basically we need to chew it so chewing process that is the mechanical mastication is going on there so because of this saliva is released and this saliva it has got an enzyme called salivary amylase salivary alpha amylase is the enzyme so the salivary alpha amylase it belongs to alpha endoglycosidase enzyme and note that salivary alpha amylase is going to break down alpha 14 glycosidic linkase present in starch so starch is the major polysaccharide that we are going to take in the diet glycogen is another polysaccharide we get it from animal derived food but glycogen is such a low quantity in a meat so that's why we don't really mention about it. Otherwise, glycogen is a polysaccharide. It has got alpha-14 linked amylose component, alpha-16 linked amylopectin component. Starch is also a branched polysaccharide. It has got alpha-14 linked amylose component, alpha-16 linked amylopectin component. So starch is broken down in the mouth if so if we give sufficient time for alpha amylase by chewing 20 to 40 times. So what happens? Starch is broken down in the mouth to alpha dextrin. Alpha dextrin is basically a simplified form of starch because alpha amylase enzyme, salivary alpha amylase enzyme is going to break it down in, in uh, randomly alpha 14 bonds. Now what will happen to lactose, sucrose and fructose in the mouth? So the lactose, sucrose and fructose, they just get down into the stomach. So after mastication, when we swallow food, so basically the stomach, stomach will have alpha dextrin, then it will have lactose, it will have fructose, and it will have sucrose all these things they just get down there there is no digestion of carbohydrates occur in stomach because stomach is not going to release any carbohydrate digestive enzyme and also note that salivary alpha amylase which gets down into the stomach it will be denatured by the acidic ph that is there in the stomach overall we there is no digestion of carbohydrates in the stomach now when the stomach contracts, when the gastric contraction occurs, so the gastric content gets into the first part of duodenum. In the first part of duodenum, so we have endocrine cells uh, uh, located. These endocrine cells, they will secrete cholecystokinin and secretin hormones. Now the cholecystokinin and secretin, so they will go to the pancreas and they are going to bring pancreatic juice into the second part of duodenum. Now the pancreatic juice it contains digestive enzymes and the carbohydrate digestive enzyme that comes from pancreas is pancreatic alpha amylase enzyme. 
Now this pancreatic alpha amylase is very similar to salivary alpha amylase. It means it's it's an alpha endoglycosidase. It's going to act on alpha 1,4 glycosidic bonds. So what is the substrate for pancreatic alpha amylase? Pancreatic alpha amylase is going to act on alpha dextrin now because starch is converted to alpha dextrin by action of salivary alpha amylase. If the salivary alpha amylase did not work in the mouth because some people they just swallow the food without chewing properly, at that time pancreatic alpha amylase will have a overload of work because starch just get down into the duodenum there. So it has to work on starch. Overall what pancreatic alpha amylase does is going to act on alpha dextrin or starch and break it down into oligosaccharides. It will break it down into maltose and will break it down into isomaltose. These are the digestive products coming from pancreatic alpha amylase. You get oligosaccharides, basically these are 3 to 9 glu uh, monosaccharide or glucose containing molecules. Maltose, it is 2 glucose units attached with alpha 1,4 glycosidic bond. Isomaltose is 2 glucose units attached with alpha 1,6 glycosidic bonds. So at the end of action of salivary alpha amylase and pancreatic alpha amylase overall in the intestinal lumen especially in the second part of the duodenum you will have oligosaccharides, maltose which is a disaccharide and isomaltose which is another disaccharide. This is what happens with the action of salivary alpha amylase and pancreatic alpha amylase enzyme. Now let's move on to see what will happen to oligosaccharides, maltose, isomaltose, sucrose and lactose. All the three, all these disaccharides and oligosaccharides, what will happen to them in our intestine, especially in the duodenum and in the jejunum. Now the brush border epithelium present in duodenum and jejunal epithelium, so they have brush borders. The purpose of this brush border as you might be knowing that it increases the surface area for SL. Now this brush border epithelium so it will be attached with uh, specific enzymes. So these are the enzymes which are located or which are embedded already on the brush border epithelium. So what kind of enzymes this brush border epithelium of duodenum and jejunum contains? Note that these are the enzymes which are already attached to the brush border epithelium. They are not free enzymes. These enzymes do not come from the pancreas or salivary glands. So we have alpha glucosidase enzyme. So this alpha glucosidase enzyme, so it is going to take care of oligosaccharides and release one glucose at a time from non-reducing end of oligosaccharides. So oligosaccharides comes in. Oligosaccharides, the substrate for alpha glucosidase is oligosaccharides. Oligosaccharides will be released as glucose molecule, individual glucose molecules, n number of them. So 3 to 9 glucose units are basically called as oligosaccharides. So alpha glucosidase is going to work on the non-reducing end of oligosaccharide and release individual glucose mole molecules. That's the job of alpha glucosidase enzyme. Now we have a drug or a chem uh, medication called acarabose. Acarabose, this drug is going to inhibit alpha glucosidase enzyme thereby it decreases digestion of oligosaccharides in the intestine. Acarabose is used in the treatment of diabetes mellitus. That's an applied aspect that you should remember. Now what maltase enzyme does? As the name says maltase, maltase substrate for maltase is maltose. Maltose is a disaccharide with two glucose units with alpha 1,4 bond. So understandably maltase is going to break that alpha 1,4 bond and release two glucose units two glucose molecules will be released under the influence of maltase enzyme. Now the isomaltase which is attached to the brush border epithelium is the substrate for that is isomaltose. So isomaltase enzyme is going to break down isomaltose into two glucose units again. But only thing is it's going to break down alpha 1,6 linkase. The difference between maltase and isomaltase 
maltase is going to break down alpha 14 bond of maltose and release two glucosinates isomaltase is going to act on alpha 16 bond of isomaltose and release two glucosinates now the sucrase as the name says sucrase sucrase is going to act on sucrose and it's going to release a uh, glucose plus fructose it means sucrase enzyme is going to break down alpha 12 bond that is present in sucrose that's the specificity of sucrase enzyme now the lactase enzyme lactase enzyme is going to act on lactose that's a milk sugar and break al beta 14 bond there and release galactose plus glucose so lactase enzyme acts on beta 14 bond present in lactose and release galactose plus glucose like this individual enzymes alpha glucosidase maltase isomaltase sucrase lactase these are all the enzymes which are attached to brush border epithelium they act on their specific sugar molecules and break them into most simpler form that monosaccharides so at the end of it also your starch lactose table sugar sucrose they all will be ultimately converted into glucose molecule and then fructose molecule and galactose molecule now the glucose fructose and galactose all of this will be present in the lumen of intestine so they their concentration will increase in the lumen of intestine so they need to be absorbed into the enterocyte now the absorption mechanism needs a transporters so the absorption of carbohydrates so i have done another video so you can watch it in that video so i'll be uploading that video uh, soon so you can watch the absorption of carbohydrates so the mechanism different transporters that are needed to absorb monosaccharides from intestinal lumen into enterocytes i hope this video made the things simple and i hope you understood the important points related with digestion of carbohydrates and you are going to see uh, i'll going i'm going to make a video on, on absorption of carbohydrates you can see that on the link that will be appearing over there on top thanks for watching and see you again in in my next video take care